the $0.50 medication can stop crushing chest pain in 90 seconds, but most patients use it wrong. Today we'll decode one all anti-anginal drug classes with memory tricks, two clinical versus exam knowledge every med student needs, three real-world pitfalls even doctors miss. Consider this your pharmacology cheat sheet for angina. When someone has angina pectoris, that tight, squeezing chest pain, it's usually because their heart isn't getting enough oxygen-rich blood. To help with this, doctors use medicines called anti-anginal drugs. Think of it like this. Imagine your heart is a car engine. If the fuel line gets clogged, the engine struggles. Anti-anginal drugs are like clearing the blockage or easing the pressure so the engine, your heart, can run smoothly again. There are a few main types of anti-anginal medicines. Nitrates and nitrites, like nitroglycerin, isosorbide dinitrate and pentaryl tetranitrate, help by relaxing and widening blood vessels. This lowers blood pressure and makes it easier for the heart to pump blood, reducing chest pain. Beta blockers, medicines that block certain signals to the heart, and calcium channel blockers also help by slowing the heart down and relaxing the blood vessels. Some older drugs, like papaverine and dipyridamol, are still sometimes used because they help improve blood flow too. In short, anti-anginal drugs help by either reducing the heart's workload or improving blood flow, or both, making it easier for the heart to do its job without pain. Nitrates and nitrites, what they are and how they help. Nitrates and nitrites are important medications used to treat and prevent angina, that uncomfortable chest pain caused by heart disease. They work by widening blood vessels, which improves blood flow to heart and makes it easier for the heart to do its job with less effort. Some common examples you might hear about include nitroglycerin, isosorbide dinitrate, and isosorbide mononitrate, how they work mechanism of action. Nitrates and nitrites relax the smooth muscles around your blood vessels. This causes the vessels to widen, a process called vasodilation. When blood vessels are wider, more oxygen-rich blood can reach the heart, and the heart doesn't have to work as hard. This also lowers blood pressure, further reducing the heart's workload. You can think of it like easing traffic on a busy highway. When the road is wide in cars, or in this case blood, can move more smoothly and easily. Common reasons to use nitrates. Angina. Chest pain to quickly relieve or prevent episodes of chest pain. Acute coronary syndrome. Heart attack nitroglycerin is often used during an emergency to help the heart. Heart failure. Sometimes nitrates are used to improve heart function. Other uses. Occasionally, nitrates are prescribed for conditions like high blood pressure or even anal fissures to help relax muscles. Types of nitrates. There are two main types based on how quickly they work. Short-acting nitrates. These are used when someone needs quick relief from angina pain. Example, nitroglycerin tablets placed under the tongue or sprays used during a chest pain episode. Long-acting nitrates. These are used for preventing chest pain from happening in the first place. Examples. Isosorbide mononitrate or isosorbide dinitrate. Taken by mouth or used as skin patches. Common nitrate medications. Nitroglycerin. Available as tablets like nitrostat, sprays like nitromus and nitrolingual, and skin patches like nitrodur. Isosorbide dinitrate comes in short-acting and long-acting forms, often used for ongoing angina management. Isosorbide mononitrate, typically used for long-term prevention of angina symptoms. Anti-anginal drugs, beta blockers. Beta blockers are medicines that help treat angina, chest pain from heart disease, by making the heart's job easier. They do this by slowing down the heart rate, reducing how strongly the heart squeezes and lowering blood pressure, all of which mean the heart needs less oxygen. How beta blockers work. They lower the heart's workload by reducing how hard and how fast the heart pumps. 
They also reduce the resistance in blood vessels, making it easier for blood to flow. Types of beta blockers. There are two main kinds. Cardioselective beta blockers. These mainly target beta-1 receptors in the heart at higher doses. They can also affect beta-2 receptors found in the lungs and blood vessels. Non-selective beta blockers. These affect beta-1, beta-2, and even alpha-1 receptors, meaning they act more broadly across the body when beta blockers are used. Stable angina. Beta blockers are very effective at preventing chest pain in people with this form of angina. Important note, not all beta blockers are officially FDA approved for angina. Always check which one is prescribed. Caution. Beta blockers can actually make vasospastic angina, angina caused by artery spasms, worse. And they might also worsen severe peripheral arterial disease. Possible side effects. Like all medications, beta blockers can cause side effects. Common ones include low blood pressure, hypotension, feeling tired easily, exercise intolerance, slow heart rate, bradycardia, fatigue and insomnia, trouble sleeping. They can also mask low blood sugar symptoms in people with diabetes. Important for diabetics to know. Trigger bronchospasms, tightening of the airways, so they must be used carefully in people with serious lung diseases like asthma or COPD. If stopping beta blockers, it's important to tape them off slowly. Stopping suddenly can raise the risk of a heart attack who should not use beta blockers. Beta blockers are not safe for people who have. Raynaud's phenomenon, a condition that affects blood flow to fingers and toes. Heart block, problems with the heart's electrical system. Sinus bradycardia, abnormally slow heart rate. Cardiogenic shock, a very serious heart failure. Six sinus syndrome, without a pacemaker. Certain types of heart failure. Also important, taking beta blockers with medications like verapamil or diltiazem, types of calcium channel blockers, can cause dangerously slow heart rates, extreme fatigue, and heart block. Antianginal drugs, calcium channel blockers. Calcium channel blockers are medicines that help manage angina, chest pain, by doing two key things. They reduce the heart's need for oxygen, by easing the heart's workload. They increase the heart's oxygen supply by widening the arteries. They work by relaxing the muscles and blood vessel walls, which leads to wider arteries, lower blood pressure, slower heart rates, and less forceful heart contractions. Types of calcium channel blockers. There are two main types. Non-dihydropyridines. These focus more on the heart itself, slowing down the heartbeat, and reducing how strongly the heart contracts. Dihydropyridines. These mainly cause widening of the blood vessels throughout the body, helping lower blood pressure, but with less effect on the heart's rhythm. When calcium channel blockers are used, stable angina and vasospastic angina can both be treated with calcium channel blockers. However, not every calcium channel blocker is officially FDA-approved for treating angina, so doctors choose carefully. Who should avoid calcium channel blockers? These medicines should not be used in people with sick sinus syndrome, unless they have a pacemaker, severe low blood pressure, hypotension, recent heart attack, acute MI, pulmonary congestion, fluid buildup in the lungs, also peripheral edema, Swelling, especially in the legs and feet, is a common side effect when starting these drugs. Dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers. Dihydropyridines mainly work by causing peripheral vasodilation, meaning they widen blood vessels in the body, not just around the heart. Common side effects include lightheadedness, headache, flushing, a warm red feeling, important caution. In people with severe coronary artery disease, starting or increasing the dose of dihydropyridines must be done carefully because of the risk of worsening chest pain or even triggering a heart attack. Sometimes beta blockers are given alongside control a rapid heartbeat tachycardia, 
caused by dihydropyridines. Non-dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers. Non-dihydropyridines, like verapamil and dotiazem, mainly act by slowing down the heart's electrical signals and weakening the force of contractions. Because of this, they can lower cardiac output, how much blood the heart pumps, cause or worsen slow heart rhythms, bradycardia. They should be avoided in people with second or third degree heart block. Heart failure would reduce ejection fraction, a type of weak heart. Also, non-dihydropyridines should not be used together with beta blockers because this combination can severely slow the heart. People with Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome or wide complex tachycardia should not receive verapamil or dotiazem. Rare side note, some people may experience gingival hyperplasia, overgrowth of gum tissue, while using these medications. Late sodium current blockers, renalazine. Renalazine is a medication used to help treat angina, chest pain, by reducing the heart's oxygen demand, but it works a little differently from other heart medicines. Instead of focusing on blood pressure or heart rate, renalazine blocks a late sodium current in heart cells. By doing this, it indirectly lowers calcium buildup inside the heart muscle, which reduces attention in the heart walls and makes it easier for the heart to work. Key points about renalazine. It does not significantly lower blood pressure or slow down the heart rate. It's a good choice for people who still have angina despite being on other medications. Common side effects. While most people tolerate it well, some may experience constipation, nausea, headache, dizziness. In rare cases, muscle problems, myopathy, can occur. Important safety information. Renalazine is processed by the liver, mainly through the CYP3A4 and CYP2D6 enzymes. Liver disease or serious kidney problems, creatinine clearance less than 30 milliliters per minute, can increase renalazine levels in the body, which may require lowering the dose or stopping the medication altogether. Renalazine can also prolong the QD interval on an ECG, which can increase the risk of certain dangerous heart rhythms. How renalazine is taken. Starting dose. 500 milligrams taken twice a day. If tolerated well, the dose can be increased to 1,000 milligrams twice a day. Dose adjustments might be needed if there are drug interactions or if the patient can't tolerate the higher dose. Whether you're memorizing MOA for step one or managing your first angina patient, knowledge saves hearts. At HeInfo, we make complex pharmacology simple, smart, and clinical ready.